Hey folks, it's Dakota Cohen here from Cohen Farm. And I thought I would do a little video about uh, our system for birdhouses on the farm. Uh, it's early spring here and uh, I'm just out cleaning all of the, the birdhouses from last year to get them ready for some new occupants that are probably going to be showing up any day now. And uh, I just wanted to go through some of the, the design um, Th that uh, the design ideas in terms of the the kind of birdhouses that we that I like that, and some that I don't. Um, I also wanted to talk a bit about the placement, um, where we put them on the farm and why, and uh, some of the benefits that we're getting from these birds. So to start off with, uh, I wanted to go over two basic designs that we're using on the farm right now and uh, which one I like better. So this is the birdhouse that I like the best. Um, it's a super simple design. It all it is is um, uh, various dimensional lumber. So this is like a one by six. You can see uh, the dimensions there. It's one by six. That's a one by four. That's a one by eight. Uh, the guy that made these was just a retired, um, uh, retired guy. He charged me 10 bucks to make them. Um, the the only thing I would I would do differently is I don't think the top needs to be one by eight. That would probably cut down a considerable amount on the cost. And I also um, the complication of making the um, a uh, a mitered or not a mitered an angled cut here um, on the top. That's not necessary. They can just be square cuts all the way around, and that would cut down on the the time to make them. Um, as well as uh, just make it a lot simpler for nailing and, and jigs and stuff. There's no reason to put a slope roof on these things. Uh, I guarantee you when you're putting them up, you're not going to be putting a level on here to make sure that they're, they're plumb and everything. Water's going to run off of them. Uh, it's going to be totally fine. Uh, another really, uh, really nice detail is uh, the door swings open on the front. So he just basically pre-drilled uh, holes on either side, put some screws in, and that allows it to pivot. I really like this design. It's super fast. I'll show you the other one uh, up the hill here that I do not like. Uh, another really important piece is to uh, make sure the bottom isn't uh, sealed off. So he, again, made some really complicated, like uh, I think he's got an, oct an octagon here um, in the bottom. That's, uh, or show you there, that's very unnecessary. Uh, I would make it a lot more complicated. You could just cut off a single corner and just to get airflow or if, or if water got trapped in there, you don't want the, the birds or anything to drown. Um, other than that, I, I can't really improve on that design. It's probably really cost effective to build. Um, also, in terms of paint, don't paint, don't bother. They don't last long enough in, in my experience. Um, just uh, one product that if, if you do want to go the extra mile is a product called Lifetime. It is basically, a, it's an all natural uh, mineral uh, spray that you can put on to wood that kind of gives it a cedar type look and it helps helps to supposedly preserve the wood for a few years longer but uh, with these birdhouses uh, with the wear and tear on them and and um, everything else there's uh, uh, not much you can do to um, they're, they're gonna probably gonna break before the paint would would wear out in my experience especially if you have livestock around which brings me to the points about placing them. So uh, whenever possible, I try to orient them uh, away from my pastures. So uh, we've got a, uh, our two wire electric fence here. So we're grazing on this side of the fence. And this here is my forest garden. So I don't have cows in here. So that's why I'm facing it in here. Um, one of the things I found, uh, the cows love any little corner that they can get on to, to rub their, their necks or itch something on. Um, and keeping it as low to the um, electric wire as possible is going to basically train your cows that um, if they try to scratch on these things, it's not in their best interest. Um, that's also why I, I keep them basically as high as I can to the top of the post. You, if, if I had this thing on top here, it would have been smashed the first year. The cows would just come by and just destroy it. If you do, so obviously birds like to be higher off the ground, um, but um, of all these birdhouses, we have over 200 birdhouses on the farm, and I think I've had like two empty ones, two or three empty ones uh, thus far, and I'm about half done. So 
they're using them. It's it's not a big deal. But if you did want to have them on top of a post or something like that, what I've seen other guys do is they'll screw a two by four on um, to get it up higher so the cows can't rub on that. But then the cows could bust that off, and then you could you could run a hot wire around the whole thing, like a kind of a little uh, like a prison barricade or something like that, to if the cows touched any part of it. But in my opinion, that's way too complicated. It's also really difficult to clean. I'll show you my process for cleaning them and how I can do it from sitting on a quad or, or a side-by-side -side here when I go up to the next one. But uh, the next thing I wanna show you is another greenhouse or a birdhouse design that we used um, a couple years ago. They were the first ones that we got. And uh, what I don't like about them, they're, they're, they look pretty. They're definitely, you know, the premium, uh, you know, premium birdhouses, but uh, again, I don't think the birds care too much what they look like. Uh, it's just a matter of, of how well they get used. And the easier they are for me to maintain, the more likely the birds are going to use them. So uh, this is that design, as you can see, you know, the people put a lot of detail into them. These ones are made of plywood. And uh, so I'm going to go through some of the design elements of this. Uh, again, they, they work really well for like for birds, but in terms of being around cattle and a few of the problems that I don't like about them. So first thing is uh, the lid comes off and uh, it's a super complicated lid. Like it would probably take longer to make this lid than it would to make that entire birdhouse. So they've got like a, a little wedged piece there, some holes drilled in the top for, for air that slides in there. The problem with this is if a cow touches this at all, falls off or um, even if it's I've got some that are up where there's no birdhouses whatsoever or no no cows that have access to it and so the wind blows them off and you lose the lid and the birdhouse is worthless and so this birdhouse would cost four or five times as much to make and the lid goes in and you're done uh, in terms of cleaning them uh, it seems like a really good idea but it is uh, really expensive um, are not expensive. Well, it'll be expensive to make, but it's also a pain to clean. I'll show you. I, I can't clean this birdhouse from my side by side. So the bottom falls out, and that's just a little false bottom here. And then the idea is you take the top off and you push the whole kind of um, bird nest out, like this guy, which I've already done. Um, and so it it uh, it works, but again, it's it's way more complicated than it needs to be. And it has a little wire uh, attachment system here that um, you basically put the uh, the loops on. I'm trying to do this. Oh. You can see so you can't do that. You can't do that one-handed. Um, I'll throw this lid back up there. So again, th that's a design that I don't like. It, it was designed specifically for bluebirds um, based on all the specs. So I think it's an inch and, um, was it inch and five sixteenths or inch and, and uh, uh, I think that'd be, that might be inch and five sixteenths. There's specs online for, for the exact diameter hole for what uh, bird, bird, different birds like. Um, and uh, actually that's another criteria I want to talk about here is um, uh, I try to put my birdhouses wherever there's a water tap. Um, in, on this particular line, there isn't a tap here because um, it's a narrower field and so I've got my tap spaced further apart. But uh, so in this field, it'd be like every second birdhouse would be a water tap for my livestock. So the birdhouses also serve as a demarcation element for to help us figure out where our our water taps are when we're uh, going to hook up our tank for rotationally grazing our cows um, and because uh, they get they get buried in grass and all sorts of stuff like that so the you can see two different designs there uh, they both get about the same occupancy rate one the, the these dimensional lumber ones that aren't painted would be much easier to build um, they're also, as you'll see, way easier to clean out. So I'm going to hop on uh, my uh, my side by side here, and I'm going to drive around and uh, clean that birdhouse out over there. And that's basically what I've been doing. So you can see, you know, we've got these um, these systems of swales 
um, that are, uh, we've got fences in between them. And uh, I try to keep the birdhouses like a few hundred meters apart from each other. Um, so I just kind of space like there's, you know, there's one birdhouse here, there's one birdhouse there, there's another one over there. So I kind of I kinda triangulate them. Uh, birds are territorial and um, they like to have, you know, kind of a, a zone that they can, they can call their own. And with this spacing, I mean, you know, it's, it's pretty close together. Like you, you can, um, in terms of a straight line, we're only uh, uh, maybe 150 meters uh, away from that other birdhouse. But uh, while well, this one was occupied, we'll see that other one. I'm, I'm going to bet that it's occupied too from last year. Because we just put these up last year. I've had those painted ones up for probably about five or six years now. And... Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna hop in now. We'll, uh, we'll start this up and I'll show you how simple it is for, uh, for me to clean, clean these birdhouses out. All right. So you just drive up, get as close as you can to the fence, reach out, grab that thing, throw it on the ground, close the lid, and you're done. So a few other things I wanted to mention about the, the birdhouse design, uh, in terms of them, some things that are really important to think about, uh, are depending on how rough your wood is, uh, you might have to actually uh, scratch up. You can see I... I did it here. You might have to scratch up the um, the uh, back side of the the door uh, leading up to the entranceway. One of the problems that I noticed with these birdhouses made with dimensional lumber because they're planed, um, they're they're quite smooth. And um, the the last time we put these up, uh, we actually had some baby birds die inside the birdhouses because. They couldn't get out once they were full grown um, and actually full grown birds as well. We had a couple, there was one that had two or three, it was early in the year that had uh, two or three um, uh, swallows dead in a single box as I was kind of going around to check to see you know, how the birds were liking them. And so then I had to quickly go in and rough them all up um, after I set them up. It, was, it took a, a long time, but after that I, I haven't had any problems with birds dying inside, but it's just because they go in and they can't fly inside. They can't because um, the, the box is too small. So they need to actually have something rough they can get their little toenails into. Um, and so they they weren't able to get up. So that's really important. Is is you make some kind of a saw kerf. Ideally, you would do this before you built it, and you could make a saw kerf. Or I just took a chisel and just literally just dragged it across. That'd probably be faster than using a saw. Um, so that's a really important piece to um, to remember. Uh, and then here's here's another one of the um, uh, one of our our main water lines with a tap on it um, that we can we can open up. And so I try to put them as close as I can to um, to a birdhouse. The birdhouse acts as a demarcation device, and then I just use some scrap uh, tin to keep the grass around the the uh, pipeline down so that it's nice and visible, and um, we don't hit it with the tractor or something like that with the haybine. And that's been working really well. So I want to talk a bit about the benefits. Why, why, why go through all this trouble? Why do you have 200 birdhouses that cost uh, like literally thousands of dollars to put this up on our place? Um, and uh, we have over, so we have over 200 birdhouses on about about 250 acres. Most of them are concentrated on our home quarter section here. Um, probably can't see them all around, but essentially there is a birdhouse um, within. Mm -hmm. Two, two to 300 meters of every location on our home quarter. Um, and uh, we've, we've concentrated our efforts there and, and we'll be kind of expanding out to our, uh, some of our land that's, that's further away from, from our home. As we've just been learning about what works, what doesn't, things like that. But um, so why, why, why go to all this benefit? Well, um, for starters, um, we haven't used any herbicides or, um, or pesticides for over 30 years. And uh, I think one of the, the reasons for that is because we have such great biodiversity on the farm. Well, you can hear some geese in the, the wetland there. Don't, uh, they're worried that I'm gonna 
come and take their babies. Um, so yeah, one of the reasons why we don't have to use antiparasiticals for our, our cows or any pesticides or anything on our crops is because we have a lot of bird diversity. Uh, our, the target species that we're going after with these birdhouses uh, would ideally be bluebirds. Um, I've only ever seen like two or three uh, bluebirds on the farm since we started doing this. But um, we get a lot of tree swallows and wrens. Those, those are the two most common uh, birds that we get in these nest boxes. And they are both uh, uh, insectivorous birds. Um, and uh, they eat literally thousands and thousands of bird uh, insects every single year, um, which help keep you know, the, the pests down on our cows and from our crops and uh, all that good stuff. So, which is another reason why I like to put the birdhouses and my livestock watering um, systems together is uh, the cows always concentrate their efforts, uh, regardless of how close it, there's, there's another water tap just over by that second birdhouse over there. And so their, their water taps are quite close together. Um, so the cows never have to go very far uh, and they're never using more than one tap at once. That's just so that we can rotate them and put up a back fence so they don't go back and overgraze uh, pasture from uh, um, for more than uh, we, they only have access to pasture for for um, f uh, four days, and uh, we move them every day. But then we back fence them every fourth day so that they can't go back and graze the new growing plants. And so that's how we space our our water taps out. And then that also kind of works in. Um, it's a works out to be about 400 meters between water taps, which means two birdhouses at 200 meters apart, roughly. Uh, so by having the, um, the water tap right next to the birdhouse like this, um, the cows are always hanging around, around this area. And when they come up to drink, you know, you've got a bird sitting right up here and, um, he's going to be flying around the cows, picking the birds off their back, the insects off their backs. And, um, you know, basically making sure that we don't have to use any insecticides because there's a lot of folks don't know this, but, um, you know, antiparasiticals are uh, a really common thing in cows, even if they're, they're, um, you know, so-called grass-fed beef is, um, like people will use porons or they literally pour chemicals down the backs of, of cows to get rid of, um, things like, uh, they're like, uh, they borrow into the, the skins of the cows. I can't remember the names of them. Um, but, uh, there's all kinds of stuff that they do. That's just, they'll, they'll sometimes those ear tags that you see, they can actually be slow release, uh, antiparasiticals in their ear tags and, um, they'll give, uh, you know, internal parasites, antiparasiticals that they eat. But between, you know, this wonderful plant here, uh, on the farm, which is, uh, sage, uh, I think it's absinthium officinale, um, just absinthe wormwood. Uh, this is a vermifuge, which means it, it means or an antiparasitical, and um, so the cows can actually use this to to treat their own parasites internally, and the birds here uh, take care of all of the um, uh, parasites from from outside. So that that kind of I mean, the the cost is you know thousands of dollars that we don't have to spend on all the chemicals and stuff that uh, a lot of other producers would have, would have to spend, but also. It, those are going into the meat that you are eating and so uh, you know our customers who have you know very serious health issues they don't have to worry that we are uh, essentially lacing their food with um, things that kill other living things so that right there is is in a nutshell you know why we're we're um, we're putting up these birdhouses the the location in terms of you know spacing them out between our pastures how close we're putting them together so we literally have like think of this as like it's like an integrated pest management system like on steroids where we've got this like you know essentially a minefield of uh of uh, security guards or whatever that are working you know 24 7 during the growing season uh for almost free the only maintenance is you know i had to I, we bought these birdhouses they're about ten dollars a piece and uh every year it takes me let's say three hours to clean all the birdhouses out and i would have to do that anyways because as i'm driving along my fence line here i'm checking my fence line to make sure that you know, there's no grass or trees that have fallen on it or shorting it out. I'm also getting my, um, I'm closing my valves here so that I can get ready for 
uh, priming my water line here to to get it going um, once the once the temperatures get above freezing uh, so we can get our cows out here so uh, I'd be driving out here anyways um, and it just takes me another uh, you know second to open the birdhouse door clean it out and uh, get them ready for next year so I hope you guys enjoyed that video and we will talk to you later take care bye